Daily Words of God Each day, the deeds and thoughts of everyone are regarded by Him and at the same time are in preparation for their own tomorrow. This is a path that must be walked by all of the living and that I have predestined for all. None can escape this, and exceptions are made for none. I have spoken countless words, and moreover have done a numerous amount of work. Every day I watch as each man naturally carries out all that he is to do in accordance with his inherent nature and how it develops. Unknowingly, many have already set upon the right track, which I set for the revelation of every kind of man. I have already placed each kind of man in different environments, and in their place each have been expressing their inherent attributes. There is no one to bind them, no one to seduce them, they are free in their entirety, and that which they express comes naturally. There is only one thing that keeps them in check, and those are my words. Therefore, a number of men grudgingly read my words only so that their end not be one of death, but never put my words into practice. On the other hand, some men find it difficult to endure the days without my words to guide and supply them. So they naturally hold my words at all times. As time goes by, they then discover the secret of human life, the destination of mankind, and the worth of being human. Mankind is no more than this in the presence of my word and I simply allow matters to take their course. I do nothing that forces man to live by my words as the foundation of their existence. And so those who never have a conscience or worth in their existence quietly observe how things go and then boldly cast aside my words and do as they wish. They begin to become weary of the truth and all that comes from me. Moreover, they weary of staying in my house. These men temporarily lodge within my house for the sake of their destinations and to escape punishment, even if they are doing service. But their intentions never change, nor do their actions. This further encourages their desire for blessings for a single passage into the kingdom where they may then remain for eternity, and even for passage into eternal heaven. The more they yearn for my day to come one day soon, the more they feel that the truth has become an obstacle, a stumbling block in their way. They can hardly wait to step foot into the kingdom to forever enjoy the blessings of the kingdom of heaven without needing to pursue the truth or accept judgment and chastisement, and most of all, without needing to lodge subserviently within my house and do as I command. These people enter into my house not to fulfill a heart that seeks the truth, nor to work together with my management. They merely aim to be one of those who will not be destroyed in the next age. Hence, their hearts have never known what the truth is or how to accept the truth. This is the reason why such men have never practiced the truth or realized the extreme depth of their corruption, and yet have lodged in my house as servants unto the end. They patiently await the coming of my day, and are tireless as they are tossed about by the manner of my work. No matter how great their effort and what price they have paid, none will see that they have suffered for the truth or sacrificed for me. In their hearts, they cannot wait to see the day I put an end to the old age. And furthermore, 
They anxiously wish to know how great my power and authority is. That which they have never hastened to do is to change themselves and to pursue the truth. They love that of which I am weary and are weary of that which I love. They long for that which I hate, but at the same time are afraid of losing that which I abhor. They live in this wicked world, yet never have hatred of it, and are deeply afraid it will be destroyed by me. The intents they hold are conflicting. They are pleased by this world which I abhor, yet at the same time yearn for me to soon destroy this world. This way, they will be spared the suffering of destruction and be transformed into lords of the next age before they have strayed from the true way. This is because they love not the truth and are weary of all that comes from me. Perhaps they will become obedient people for a short time for the sake of not losing the blessings. But their anxious for blessing mentality and their fear of perishing and entering the lake of burning fire could never be obscured. As my day draws near, their desire steadily grows stronger. And the greater the disaster, the more it renders them helpless. Not knowing where to start so as to make me rejoice and to avoid losing the blessings that they have long yearned for. Once my hand begins its work, these men are eager to take action to serve as the vanguard. They think only of surging to the very front line of the troops, deeply afraid that I will not see them. They do and say that which they think to be right, never knowing that their deeds and actions have never been relevant to the truth and merely disrupt and interfere with my plans. Though they may have put in great effort and may be true in their will and intention to endure through hardships, all that they do has nothing to do with me. For I have never seen that their deeds come from good intentions, much less have I seen them place anything upon my altar. Such are their deeds before me these many years.